Hello and I welcome you all to another video of statistics. So today is an important class as we are going to discuss one easy question, not easy but 650 level and two very difficult question, 720 plus we can say. So stay tuned, first one is easy to warm up of course, second and third one are a little bit complicated. So I would want that you watch that very carefully and with full peace of mind. So let's begin with the first one. Keep enjoying. So if set as this and we have x plus y is less than 18. So this is what they are asking us. That is x plus y less than 18. Do we have any kind of extra information? I don't think so. We have just have a set and nothing else. So we cannot resolve the question further. We have to go to the option statements. I would recommend that pause and try it on your own and then play the video as I always say. So let's go to the white page and try this question. If you haven't done it so far, please pause the video and try on your own. So you have the set S. Let's write down the known numbers of set S. Some are unknown, X and Y. We know nothing about them. The question asks us is X plus Y less than 18. Alright, the first statement tells you that the range is 9. So the range can be 9 in two possible ways. One way is that 7 becomes the smallest. And if 7 becomes the smallest, then one number has to be there which is 9 far from 7 which is 16. So X and Y, one of them have to be 16. And that is also true that none of them can go past 16. Because if any one of them is par 16, the range is not 9, it's something more than 9. The other condition is that if 12 becomes the maximum, then what can be the minimum value of x and y? Let's see that. If x becomes 12, if 12 becomes maximum, then 1 of x and y has to be minimum to make the range 9, and that is 3. So that means x and y, they are definitely greater than 3 because if they are less than 3, the range again surpasses 9. So x and y have multiple range, 3 to 16. One of them has to be either 3 or 16 and then rest all the middle numbers are applicable for the other one. So there are so many values and x plus y can definitely be greater than 18 and definitely be less than 18. Very simple example, let's, let's keep one of them, let us say x as 3. Now the numbers are 3, 7, 8, 9 and 12. The range is already 9. And put y as any number between 3 and 12, let us say 10. So 10 plus 3, 13 less than 18. Because I know they can lie between 3 and 16. Just make the range by giving one of them as 3 or 60. Isn't it? Now, can they be greater than 18 if I sum them up? Let's see. Let's put one of them as 16, higher side, so that I can get one value which gives me greater than 18, less than I've already seen. So if I put one of them as 16, let us say x, the range is already 9, and we have 16. Now y can be any number between 7 and 16. It will not disturb the range. Let us say 9, so 16 plus 9, which is 25, definitely greater than 18. So that means x plus y can be greater than 18, can be less than 18, anything. The idea is simple that they should lie in this range. And one of them either 3 or 60. There is another possibility as well that y minus x itself becomes a 9. But why would I check more? Because already I have got that this is not sufficient. That's it. Let's move to the second statement. The average of x and y, that is x plus y upon 2, is less than okay the average of set s what is the average of set s upon 6 because you have 6 numbers sum of numbers 12 plus 8 20 29 36 36 plus x plus y partially divide x plus y upon 2 is less than 36 by 6 is 6 plus x plus y upon 6 let's bring this this side and we have x plus y upon 2 minus x plus y upon 6 less than 6. If you further resolve this part, you will get x plus y upon 3, I guess. You can solve it up. I've just solved that in my mind. You'll get x plus y upon 3 is less than 6. So x plus y is less than 18. 
Now this becomes automatically sufficient. That is what we were looking for. So x plus y is less than 18. Yes, it is less than 18. If you give me the statement. So the answer is B and that is second alone is sufficient, but first alone is not sufficient. The second statement was easier, but first one was little tricky. So you should have that habit and I've explained that in range as well. That how if the range is given, one of the number gets fixed or you get a range of X and Y. I hope this is quite clear. If not, please go back, watch the questions explanation again and you'll definitely get it. Let's go ahead for a difficult question. Now this is a real difficult question, right? Where even quant 50 takers will struggle. Let's try. If S is a finite set of consecutive even integers, so I'll write consecutive even integers. Is the median of set S an odd number? So you're asking me whether the median of the set is odd number or not. Pause the video, take two minutes, try on your own. Otherwise, skip to the solution part. I'm going to the solution. Now guys, consecutive even integers. So guess anything. I'm starting with 2 and 4 plus 6 dot 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 and they're going till 2n. I don't know what, but they're going till 2n. Is the median of set S an odd number? When will be the median odd and when will be the median even? Understand, if the number of the terms are odd, so if the number of terms I'm talking about, all right, number of terms if they are odd, then the median is the central number. And the median is the central number that is itself 6. So if n is odd, then there is a specific term of the set which acts as the median. And all the terms of the set, they are even. So the median will definitely be even if the number of terms become odd. But if the number of terms become even, then you have two central terms. Like 2, 4, 6 and 8. Now you have two central terms. And if you have two central terms, the median is average of these two numbers, which is 5. And now the median is odd. So if the median has to be an odd number, there is only one possibility. And that is the number of terms become even. So now question to me is not that the median is odd or not. I have broken down the question into one simple aspect that my number of elements in the set, are they even or odd? If they are even, data sufficient. If they are definitely odd, the data sufficient. If they are even, yes, it is odd. If they are odd, yes, it is not odd. Still, I can answer the question, guys. It's about answering the question, not whether it comes out to be odd or not. So, now, the question is simpler for me, that what is the number of terms in the set? Even or odd? If even, sufficient. If odd, sufficient. Don't know, not sufficient. That's it. If you understood this part, move ahead. Otherwise, repeat this explanation. Now, the mean of the set S is an even number. Let's find out the mean of the set. So, mean of the set is sum of the numbers, that means these, upon the number of numbers, which is n, of course. Right? That's why I've taken till 2n. 2 1 ja, 2 2 ja, 2 3 ja, 2 n ja, n number. This is the mean. Now, what is this? Let's take two common. You have 1 plus 2 plus 3 dot 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 n upon n and you must be knowing this is an AP or you must be knowing that sum of n consecutive integers is n into n plus 1 upon 2. If you don't know it, you should remember this formula sum of n consecutive integers n into n plus 1 upon 2 cancels, 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 cancels. So the mean is equals to n plus 1. Now you are giving me that mean is an even number. So what is n? n is mean minus 1. Mean is even. Even minus 1 is definitely odd. That means you are giving me n equals to odd. And if you are giving me number of terms as odd, I can definitely answer the question. That's what I was looking for. Number of terms are odd. Median is definitely even. So the data becomes sufficient. Very informative. Very good technique used. Proper aptitude. I hope this is clear. If yes, go ahead. If not, please watch the second explanation of first statement. The second statement is quite simpler compared to the others. It says that the range of the set S is divisible by 6. Okay. So the range is divisible by 6. Let us say the set can be 2, 4, 6 and 8. The range 
is 6 divisible by 6 median median is clearly 5 number of terms is even guys 4 terms right another set 2 4 6 8 10 12 and 40 added another 3 numbers so the range will again become a multiple of 6 because you have consecutive integers they differ by 2 you want to make the difference by 6 so 3 integers more to be added now you have total 7 integers that is the number of terms are odd so sometimes it's coming out to be odd here you add 4 sometimes it's coming out to be even if the number of terms is not fixed of course the median will not be fixed we have already seen that in the first part of the discussion of this question you can see here also now the median will turn out to be the central number which is 8 so here the median is even here the median is odd this is not sufficient to answer the question so the answer to this question is a statement one alone is sufficient but second alone is not sufficient very good question if you have understood it very well if not please go back watch this particular question again so many insights hidden over here let's go to the next question and the last one for this video this is also very difficult try it on your own the level again 720 plus all right so s is a set of positive integers the average of the term in s is equal to the range of the term in s all right so the average of the set is equals to the range of the set and you are looking for the sum of the integers in s let's try this as well let's see if we can rectify the question a little bit more i hope you have tried it if not again please stop try on your own and then watch the video so let us say s has some positive integers right x1 x2 x3 and something i don't know how many xn upon n this is the average of the terms now this is equals to the range which is xn minus x1 you're asking me the sum of the integers so sum of the integers which is this which is of course this so sum of the integers is equals to n multiplied by xn minus x1 so i need to know two things if you give me the number of terms and you give me the range i'm done i'll be able to find out the sum let's see if you're giving me that or not good the first one talks about the range the range of the set s is a prime number that is less than 11 okay and it's not a factor of 10 so much information given about the range let's see what are the possible numbers prime number less than 11 2 3 5 7 just 4 not a factor of 10 get rid of 2 get rid of 5 so the range is either 3 or 7 but not a fixed number yet and total number of numbers in not given so i cannot find the sum because so many information is still vacant see the data is insufficient clearly but if you still want to see any two different cases i can show you very easily i am trying to keep the range as three so one and four the range is three what can i make the other integer to make the range three since the range is three the mean also has to be three so let's keep the other number as four now see the range is three the mean is three and the sum is 9 one case now let's make the range as 7 so one I'm taking as 4 the other one as 11 the range is already 7 you want the mean also to be 7 so sum should be 21 11 4 15 then 6 so now this is another set median is 7 mean is 7 right so of course you can have multiple sets which can satisfy these condition and have different sum because range has two possible values and of course n is still not given let's go to the second statement this is alone not sufficient as is composed of five different integers so you gave me that n is five very well different integers that means all of them have to be different but x n minus x1 still not given so this also becomes not sufficient but if i club both the statements one and two if i club them what do I have? I have that range is either 3 or 7 
and n equals to 5. I am interested in sum which is 5 into range. Now guys think, if the range is 3 and you say you have different 5 integers, if range is 3, even I put them k, k plus 1, k plus 2, k plus 3. The range is 3 and I have got 4 different integers. Can you add one more different integer? I don't think so. Of course, you cannot change the range. The range has to be 3. If I add k minus 1, the range becomes 4. Not allowed. If I add k plus 4, the range becomes 4. Not allowed. So with 5 different integers, you can never have a range 3 even if you keep them the closest. See the range is 4. So that means range can never be 3 if you have 5 different integers. So the range is 7. So the sum is 5 into 7 that is 35. So the answer is C Calcutta. If you give me both I can tell you that the range is 7 and the number of numbers are 5. But what are they? I don't know. But definitely the range is 7 the numbers are 5, sum is 5 into 7, that's 35. This of course was given in the question, right? That the average of the terms, that is sum of on n, is equal to range. So what is sum? n into range. I hope it is clear and I hope you are enjoying the series and you are learning so many new concepts, difficult questions, quality questions, new questions. Please like, share and subscribe so that we can keep going. It takes a lot of efforts to create such videos, find questions for you. Please like, share and subscribe so that I can, you know, continue in my full flow. Thank you guys for watching the video. Keep enjoying, free of learning, sitting at your home. Bye-bye and take care.